I don't uh, uh, believe in demons uh, for today. I said, well, what happened to them? Did they get the flu and die? Did they get sick? What happened? Uh, they think, for whatever bizarre reason, that they all disappeared in 100 A.D. Uh, I, I, I don't know if they think aliens landed and loaded up all of the demons and put them in UFOs and took them to another planet, uh, but they had this crazy thinking that uh, the demons just disappeared and uh, mm-hmm. and uh, and then other people think everything is demons uh, and that uh, there's no psychological disorders um, in every in every country of the world mm-hmm. uh, we know that people have a psychological disorder a disorder uh, means uh, a lack of order in thinking properly. That's, That's right. Well, I, you know, Doctor, I, I'm so glad that you brought this point up. And and th- this is something that, I, you know, once God began to explain this to me, this opened up a lot of ministry, even when I'm praying with people, just knowing what the Spirit of the Lord is trying to do under certain circumstances, that, we, we, you know, you're describing systems and even systems leading into different forms of spiritual bondage, literally in the kingdom of darkness, in like dungeon pits uh, that these people, they're tied to these things. Um, this is something that we, uh, as believers, as ministers of the gospel, need to understand. God will work to move somebody out of this situation. That That's something that God, I believe, wants to do, and, and that's why I, I, I'm so happy that you shared this. You know, the fact of the matter is that Jesus did say that he claim, uh, he, he, he came to bind up the brokenhearted, to open the prison to them which are bound. And, of course, we know that Jesus didn't come and set everyone that's in prison free, literally. It's not like, you know, Alcatraz never got to exist because, well, there's no prison for anyone anymore. Jesus came. You know, there's literal prison. That prison is different. That is a spiritual prison that Jesus, by his power, is wanting to liberate people out of it. And in the context of mind control and altars, he's liberating altar fragments out of these things. We need to know that God will do this. Uh, yes, that, that's uh, definitely uh, true. Um, uh, people do not understand the degree in which uh, Jesus can help us. Uh, when, when the Bible says over and over again, nothing with God is impossible, uh, that is true. Now, God works normally within natural order, uh, but in the Old and New Testament, we know that he uh, performs miracles as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, the Bible says in Second Corinthians uh, 10, 4, and 5, the weapons of our warfare is mighty. Um, we need to bring the kingdom of heaven down to earth because people are walking and are in bondage to the kingdom of darkness. Uh, But we have to tear down the strongholds in our minds. Now, Mm -hmm. let me explain very clearly what a stronghold is. Okay. A stronghold is like a castle, in fact, it used to be called a stronghold was a synonym for castle. Now, let's just say, for the sake of argument, a castle is made out of 1,000 stones. So a stronghold is uh, a thousand different experiences in a person's life Uh, that creates uh, a major uh, mental stronghold in their life. 
for example, if a person um, mm -hmm. was uh, given away for adoption as a child and they're told later on, they perceive that as uh, uh, stone number one to build the, the castle or the stronghold of a fear of rejection. And then stone number two would be one altar. So that's a uh, simplistic explanation of what dissociative identity disorder is. And, and, and okay, that's great. And, and here's the thing I want to bring out too. The way you describe strongholds, which is so true, what it sounds like to me are like uh, viruses that get into a computer operating system and obstruct the operations that the computer is trying to do for the user to actually get something productive done. They're like programs that get in there and poison the system. Yes, that, that's exactly correct. And and there is uh, there is another type of system that I haven't mentioned yet. Uh huh. And some of the latest uh, uh, is is called uh, nanobyte uh, technology systems. Mm. Now, what this means is uh, the uh, we all know computers are different models. Yes. For example, it started out a 286 computer model, then a 386, then a 486, and then it's advanced from there. Uh, a, a computer built in 1970, their hard drive used to be one big room. Now that same uh, bit of data uh, would be on a little uh, laptop. I, I have uh, a hard drive with uh, two terabytes, uh, which is really large. Mm -hmm. But a person whose system is based on nanotechnology, it is very sophisticated. Um, uh, Christians today uh, have troubles uh, struggling with understanding um, 
dissociative identity disorder and caused by satanic ritual abuse uh, during a during that's created during a ritual mm-hmm. or altars that were uh, programmed uh, to carry out specific uh, jobs or responsibilities for the cult or even uh, there's what's called demon calling rituals and revelations where during a specific ritual when a cult altar in the person is created, <clears throat> they summon demons to enter that altar and cause trauma and pain from the inside. Yes. Which creates further uh, altars. <clears throat> but uh, nano, uh, nanotechnology, a system of nanotechnology, is... is Far more advanced than that. Um, what uh, what they do is uh, they actually have a machine mm-hmm. uh, that uh, creates a nanobite. Uh, now, uh, a nanobite is actually a small uh, computer and it um, a nanobite would be uh, 10 would be one billionth of a byte <laughs> yeah and and so for those of you that are listening a nano when you talk about like a meter like you can have a nanometer for instance that's like one billionth of the length of one meter. It's that's the size scale we're talking about of this technology. Yes. Yes, that's right. So uh, a nanite is essentially a microscopic, based on a nanometer scale. It is a microscopic machine mm-hmm. or a computer. So it is very small, and it is. Uh, it is programmed like like a tabletop computer or a laptop, but it is very small. It is a nano. It is a nanite, and a bunch of these are programmed to do a specific job. Uh, for example, uh, the uh, the cure for cancer. Um, is they can get some nano, some nanites, or in in nanobytes, they can get a a nanite computer that's very microscopically small and program it to whenever it sees a cancer cell, it just chomps it and and devours it. It's a very small uh, nano computer. So they, with a needle, they inject it in the bloodstream. Mm -hmm. These numerous number of microscopic nanites go through the bloodstream, and whenever it sees a cancer cell, it is programmed, that's the key word, Mm -hmm. it is programmed to destroy that cancer cell. It'll go throughout the body, and then go out as as human waste, and every cancer cell in the body uh, that it sees is totally destroyed, so you don't have cancer anymore. Mm. Or let's just say you have high cholesterol. These uh, these nano computers will be programmed uh, to devour. A, a certain type of cholesterol, there's good and bad cholesterol, mm-hmm. so it's programmed to devour bad cholesterol, so it go, it, it's injected in your bloodstream, it goes through and devours and destroys all of the bad cholesterol, so the next time you go to the doctor and have a test, you have a perfect... Uh, 
level of cholesterol. Now, wow. what do you think of that? So, mm. um, now, the New World Order already had these computers to program these uh, nanites or nanobytes or nano microscopic computers. So what they also do is they program these nanocomputers to do specific things to the brain. Mm-hmm. So they can, for example, um, <clears throat> they can create a a virus, a program with these nanobytes mm -hmm. that goes straight to the brain when it's injected. Wow. And it says, uh, destroy every uh, memory of this person uh, that has anything to do with Christianity. So it goes through, <clears throat> and a brain cell, a neuron, is nothing but a uh, membrane with chemicals inside. And God, in his infinite wisdom, created a different amount of electrical charge to these neurons, these brain cells, and that is called a memory. Yes. So these nano computers go through the brain and it detects the cells, the, the brain cells, that have memories uh, that's related to Christians and they try to destroy them and change them so that anything that person uh, remembers about Christianity and their identity in Christ is erased. This is incredible stuff, Doctor. Because, uh, you know, I, and, and I'm sitting here, I'm, I'm listening to this, and I'm like, based on what I've, I already know, I mean, this, it only makes sense that if you can create a technology on this size scale and program it to go after certain biophysical functions or bioelectrical functions within the brain. I mean, this would be a, 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 a possible, plausible a usage of this technology is to eliminate certain types of memories um, I mean, resonating in a certain way or whatever you want to call it. And, and um, this, <laughs> the idea that this can or not is, is not, Sci-fi, which is the, the 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 number one thing people want to think. This is oh man, this is just science fiction. These guys are just making this stuff up, whatever. Well, no, when when we just have the audacity to say, well, maybe it's not. Maybe maybe this is being perpetrated against people right now who need help, and uh, now we can begin to understand why the world is as horrible as it is. If there's things going on that. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to believe how, how, how can we help the situation but um you know this it just makes sense now here's the thing doctor that everyone that just heard you say that is asking themselves yeah if this is being done um <laughs> what kind of solutions in Christ are there for a system being upheld by something like nanotech Technology. Now, uh, that, uh, Dan, is the right question. This is the power of God. Uh, nothing will be impossible. But you've got to pray in a right uh, manner. And that is why Jesus said in Matthew 6, 9 through 13, it is called uh, the Lord's Prayer, but that is not correct. The Lord's Prayer is John 17, which is the personal prayer of Christ. Matthew 6, 9 through 13, Our Father which art in heaven, is the model prayer. It says, After this manner pray ye. So it means you have, you need to follow this manner or this 
model or this process of prayer. Now, so there's a, a certain way that you pray. Now, notice it says, uh, give us this day our daily bread. It actually says in Greek, uh, one day at a time. And that is why there is an old Christian song, one day at a time, sweet Jesus. Um, uh, so there's a... <laughs> yeah, I'm not familiar with that one either, but <laughs> go ahead. I, I'm not a singer. I don't want to turn off your audience. Right. Uh, but uh, But we also need to pray... What I say is uh, scientific prayers. I've never heard anybody use that term before me, but uh, I think now that this is the information age and uh, science is moving forward at a very, very rapid rate now, the New World Order is advancing in... Uh, their uh, plan to carry out the New World Order um, uh, plans yeah. and goals, yeah. they're doing it scientifically. Mm-hmm. And here, Christianity is uh, trying to catch up with something uh, that happened 20 years ago, and we're at least, we're actually not 20 years behind, we're 20 years behind from the past, and because many New World Order uh, technology is 20 years in the future, that makes us 40 years behind times. <laughs> um, now, I've counseled uh, a number of people that have uh, nanotechnology programming. Mm. Um, so people... Uh, that, uh, remember I said there's different models of computers. Yes. Um, uh, people uh, with SRADID, uh, Dissociative Identity Disorder, caused by satanic ritual abuse, um, approximately those 20 to 30 years of age now have nanotechnology programming. Mm. Uh, and, of course, there is no book that I no. know of the world written on uh, how to uh, counsel a, a person uh, with SRADID that has nanotechnology. Uh, right. But, but, we, but nothing is impossible with God, so you just have to understand the nature. Now, I've had the privilege of talking to some of the top nanotechnology uh, scientist in the United States. Wow. I have looked in the microscopes and, and uh, seen them designed on a nanobite microscopic level. So all you have to do is remember that nanotechnology is simply a microscopic computer. Right. So it can be programmed uh, by the by the cult to do anything uh, that you can imagine. So rituals around an altar uh, are getting to be the exception to the rule. Old ways uh, of programming people. Uh, is a a thing of the past. Now they do most of their programming uh, scientifically. So they use nanobite technology, they use genetic engineering, and many other means. They use wave technology. Right. It's the new way. Uh, we're, We're barely catching up to what they did 20 years ago. So... To answer your question, you have to understand the way the nature of that substance is. Now, what I'm referring to is it is like um, an old cassette tape. 
if you wanted to erase a cassette tape, 